Så här står vi nu och väntar på att Marcus ska landa. Vilket kommer ske alldeles strax. Alldeles här. Han har eh, sen splashdown igår var det en snabb helikopterflygning från Florida till Houston och därifrån sätta sig i ett flygplan för att åka till Köln där vi nu befinner oss. Och anledningen till att han åker till Köln är alltså för att här ligger ju ESA och European Astronaut Center. Tja! Tja! Det är ju bra själv. Det är jättebra. Dina söner har snygga kepsar, de ska du ha en sån. Nej, jag visste de snyggar. Det är ju ett tag sedan vi har pratat nu. Så vad har du gjort sen sist? Jag tog en sväng till rymden då. Har du haft det bra? Ja, otroligt bra. Det är otroligt härligt att eh, vara tillbaka på jorden. Det är också fantastiskt uppe. Jag hade säkert kunnat stanna längre. Nu blev det ju ganska länge, vilket jag är väldigt glad över. Eh, och eh, jag har fått eh, höra och jag har ju sett lite att eh, det finns ett stort intresse. Och jag är galet tacksam för det stödet som jag får. Det driver mig och hjälper mig. Så det är jättebra. Jättetack. Stort tack. Så, so between the two, flying up or going down? Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's interesting because fly- after flying up, like nothing will beat this because that's just the, f- the feel of acceleration for that long time give you a sensation of speed that I did not expect. Sometimes when you fly high, you don't sense the speed, but when you can feel that strong acceleration for such a long time, you kind of integrate and build that sensation of speed. But then coming back also, uh, looking out the window when we started to deorbit, and you see you see Earth, right? And you see how it goes faster and faster and faster and faster. And of course, it's, you're getting closer. You're not accelerating that much. But when you're at 100 kilometers and you're flying eight kilometers per second, and uh, and you everything just swooshing by, and then you feel the vibrations building up, and you hear the sounds in the capsule, and you can see the flames on the windows, and that's uh, that's also something. And the g forces. So at 0.1 g which is like a tenth of what we have here right now. Uh, I didn't feel a lot. At point three though, which is still a lot less than now, I started, oh, I'm so heavy in the seat. I'm getting pushed down in the seat. And then around, um, uh, well, actually point nine G. So still not one G. It felt like five Gs in an aircraft. That was also surprising and a really cool feeling. And I tried to lift my head, wow, is it that heavy? So yeah, and that whole experience, uh, And then, of course, when you see four parachutes opening, that was a good feeling. Uh, <laughs> and then a splashdown. Yeah, that was. So I, I can't. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. You can. Uh, uh, you, I can't. It's difficult to compare those two, but those two rides were amazing. So how is it to be back? It's uh, fantastic to get back here and feel the sun and see all of you uh, here and feel the. Uh, I don't know. Start to consolidate the experiences and uh, you think about what just happened. It's. Uh, It's of course out of this world, as they say, but it's uh, and it's yeah, it's great. So how was it up in space? What did you experience? How was it for you? Uh, oh, so many experiences. Uh, first, uh, the launch and the travel up there was <laughs> fantastic, and uh, I've been I, from my former jobs. I've been, I'm used to forces and acceleration, but this is something totally different. Uh, it's uh, just that feel of building the speed and getting up to space, and then the microgravity is something that's hard to describe. And it's uh, it's a very it's a feeling of you know flying. It's as relaxing as you would say. After a couple of days, first it feels weird in the body, and then um, uh, and then meeting, getting up to ISS and getting through the hatch. Or actually, when we after we docked and start working the procedures and do what you need to do in the capsule, and then all of a sudden you hear knocking on the on the door on the hatch, right? Which was also very surprising. I kind of forgot about that would happen. Then it knocks and you look out and you see other people in space open the hatch and you flow through and you meet all these fantastic people doing research every day uh, and just join that workforce and and uh, well so many so many things so many experiences uh, hard to describe and also yeah so when are you going back to sweden what's the first thing you're going to do when you're back try to try to describe and communicate what i've seen and experienced and, and try to convey why that is so what which parts are so important and which parts that just keeps me going and it's so motivating to to keep exploring and move our boundaries and, and just to experience things that we normally don't do. So how did your experience go? It uh, went uh, fantastic. We I think we were lucky with a lot of things. Uh, we had good uh, timing on things and the old experiments uh, are done, all the research got, got done. We ticked all the boxes uh, for, for the plan and we did even more, which is uh, of course fantastic. That was one of my 
one of my big goals was, of course, to do all the tasks and get all the data and get all the research done, but then also to be able to be there and absorb and feel and, and bring that back to here. And, um, and I had time to do that. So uh, I, I really could take those mental pictures and do the memory building and, and the uh, sensations of being in microgravity and, and also m observing all the work and the efficiency that's ongoing on the International Space Station and how the whole organization on ground and the ground support just makes everything work. And, and even when things doesn't go as planned, quickly reorganizes and never, it's, it's so efficient and there's so much up there uh, in this facility that we have built in space uh, that is traveling around the world, right? In 20,000 kilometers per hour. And, um, uh, and all, that, all the activities that is ongoing. And a lot of days, I, in the afternoon, it felt like the day went past like this. But then when you thought about what you did this morning, it felt like a week ago. So there are so many things that's ongoing all the time. And everyone up there is working like that and just producing knowledge for, for us on Earth, which is great. I'm glad to be back, or would you have stayed longer? Both. Can I say <laughs> yes to both? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to be back, but I'm also, I, I really enjoyed it, and uh, I was not in a hurry to get home, as everyone saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But is there anything you're looking forward to, or eating special food, or just sitting on the couch with your family? Um, and anything you're really looking forward to right now? S yeah, sitting on the couch with my family, yes, I uh, was looking forward to that. And, um, uh, Food-wise, I have to say, uh, I think there's been uh, quite a lot of work put into making pretty good food up there. Uh, so, some people might not agree, uh, I know, <laughs> but I, uh, I every, that was uh, that was good. Uh, some good coffee though was good to get that to plan. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, otherwise it's been uh, things that I think thought I would miss, uh, like laying down in the bed and feel the pressure of the pillow. It turned out. Over the first night, when I started to fall asleep, I f it felt like I was in a bed. But so I had to kind of look up and move because I was hovering, right? Or I was just floating. Uh, so I didn't have contact with anything except I had a belt around to not float away. And then, um, but it felt like I was, so I didn't miss that either. Uh, so no, it's great, it's great up there. Thank you all. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you.